and then scratch over that nerve, then you might collapse to the ground. <laughs> no, <stop. laughs> Welcome back, everyone, to another PT Pro from the Optimal Body Podcast. I'm Dr. Dom. I'm Doc Jen. And today we're going to be talking about cubital tunnel syndrome. I don't know if anyone's ever hit their funny bone, but it's when we get that little nerve injury and get some tingling in the outside of our hand. We're going to talk about that, what happens when it progresses, and how you might be able to back yourself out of that tingling. Let's dive in. We've talked about other things like carpal tunnel. Today, we're specifically going to talk about like the compression that happens when you're dealing at the elbow, kind of like at that funny bone region. Now, no, because we have so many other podcasts that talk about other nerve injuries or injuries in general, don't forget to subscribe because we have so many podcasts that we've posted before and also that we have coming. And if we hear from you, <laughs> then we know what you need as well. So make sure you comment below, subscribe, and then just click the bell wherever that may be, because I don't know, <laughs> so that you just don't miss out on future ones. Today, we're specifically talking about compression of the nerve at the elbow. When you think of like your funny bone, right? And you kind of like hit your funny bone, it's right on the inside of that elbow. And it makes that like really uncomfortable feeling. <laughs> that's your yeah. nerve that you're hitting. It's not actually a bone. It's your nerve right inside there. So that can become compressed. And over time, it can send signals down to the hand because that's where your nerve comes all the way down into like the pinky and the ring finger. And over time, start to create that tingling, that irritation, maybe even into that like numbness and weakness. What causes this when we start looking into the cause, it has to do a lot with the compression. So what is causing this compression? There can there can be trauma that causes compression. I think one place that we tend to see it often is just sitting in one position for a long time. You'll see it real often if people are just sitting, working on a computer and resting their elbows across a desk or something, because that's going to cause compression right below that elbow. And then people will start feeling tingling. I know specifically, I'll prop myself up on my elbow a lot of the times and be like playing around on my phone on the couch. And then after a while, I have to like sit up because my hand stops working, you know, how I how I need it to. In those early stages, that's when you're going to feel like that numbness, that tingling that's mm -hmm. happening. And a lot of times, unfortunately, from that prolonged flexion at that elbow, which is going to be majority of people working at a desk or sitting on their phones, like we're falling into a system that I think is only promoting this more and more. So understanding how we can get out of it and help it is gonna be crucial because when it starts to turn into like this chronic stage where we're not really addressing it, you're just, you feel the numbness tingling day after day, but you don't do anything about it <laughs> and you continue to just go into the same patterns, that's when we can start to find like weakness at the hand because at this point now, we're cutting off a little bit more than just like the sensory pattern from the numbness and tingling now we're getting a little bit more into like the motor pattern yeah. of our of our function of our nerve going into our hand so it starts to become hard to do like fine motor things like clipping your nails and stuff like that or typing or yeah. you know the coordination your coordination will start to go so like if you're trying to tap finger by finger that's something that we'll do with people in the clinic to just see like hey how's your fine motor coordination so if you notice in that hand you're really starting to feel like it's hard to fully squeeze as hard or, or as strong as you can with the other hand or as strong as you you used to be able to, then that's really a sign of this progressing, especially if it's not when you're just sitting with that compression on there or in the position, if it's just happening throughout the day. And we have to look at all the risk factors that kind of add into compression. If we're overweight, if we're not getting enough nutrients, we're not getting enough sleep, we're adding stress into our life, we're not getting enough even hydration, water. A diabetes can be a risk factor for adding that compression. So anything that kind of adds that compression factor as well, it might be a good idea along with what we're gonna talk about to kind of help reduce this but also getting in some anti-inflammatories into your diet. So what nutrients am I putting in? Am I adding in my leafy greens, my colorful vegetables, my fruits? Am I adding in my water? That's where you could do something like Genius Mobility. Add that to your water once a day as well. It's just mm -hmm. a, a tiny scoop and it's going to have so many things to help to reduce inflammation like curcumin and ashwagandha and all this other stuff. How do you know if this is specifically the one, if cubital tunnel syndrome is the one for you, there's a test that they call Tunnel's test where you just kind of tap over the area. So if you kind of just go and tap over your elbow, and even if you're not having symptoms, you might you might hit that nerve just right and you might notice, oh yeah, that's that's the spot. But if you are experiencing this, it'll give you much more significant symptoms. And then another one is, what is it? The scratch and collapse <laughs> test. 
where I'm like, okay, scratch out. We were talking about this before. I'm just like, so what happens if it's positive? You collapse to the ground. <laughs> you scratch Can't it and collapse. About it now. So if you take your arm and kind of go out into this external rotation and then scratch over that nerve, then you might collapse to the ground. <laughs> no, <stop. laughs> no, then again, you might feel the symptoms and it'll elicit those symptoms in a way that your arm might want to collapse. I don't know. I'm just wondering why they called it collapse. Like, That's very deceiving. I know. It's something very he deceiving can't get over. <laughs> what do I do if I'm experiencing this? The first thing we want to look at is what may have contributed to this. What positions may I sit in throughout the day? Do I sleep with my arms over my head? Like Jen, every <laughs> every morning when I come in to like see her and Kai, she's like sleeping with her arms over her head, but she doesn't have tingling in her hands. So it's okay. Continue, continue <laughs> sleeping you. as such. Thank you. Um, and that's one of the primary recommendations, especially at night, because you hold that position for six to 10 hours, depending on how long you're in bed. If you're sleeping with your elbows bent or your elbows bent and out, you know, that's going to put a lot of tension on that ulnar nerve. So one of the things that they found pretty successful, and this is over a three month period, is kind of activity modification. So we do have to address like if we are having to constantly work, obviously we do have to work to live, but maybe we're not resting that elbow. Maybe, mm -hmm. you know, we have the keyboard out a little bit more. Maybe it's a little bit lower. So you're not in s such a flexed position of your fore of your elbows you're a little bit lower. So if you have something that you can move the keyboard down, maybe not as slow as Dom is showing with straight arms, but <laughs> if you have just like a little bit more ease and you're not resting on that elbow, that can definitely help to reduce some of that pressure. And then we also, they found that splinting at night. So wearing something that mm -hmm. kept that elbow a little bit straighter so that it didn't have that, that compression yeah. from the flexing really did help. And over a three month period, a lot of people were able to feel some symptom relief. Okay, how can we put tension on this or start mm -hmm. to do what we call nerve glides or tensioning or flossing exercises. And I don't know if anybody when they were young used to do the Batman, Batman, where you turn your uh, like hand kind of upside down, you make the OK sign and you turn your hand upside down and flip it and put it on your eyeballs and you kind of <laughs> give yourself some goggles or like a mask. And that's something that puts a lot of tension on the ulnar nerve. So if you've been experiencing these symptoms, it might be tough or even painful to just jump right into that. Yeah, maybe not start there, but, but that's the end position. <laughs> we just want to make sure that we're not going too aggressive. So one thing that I like to do is actually just starting down at your side. Make sure you depress your shoulder already. When we are relaxing in our shoulder or putting tension down, we're kind of putting a little tension into that nervous system already. Now flip the hand up. So your palm is down and you're going to point your fingers up to the ceiling. Okay, and then bring your arms start to slowly just extend it out. If you feel that tingling into the, the fingers, I mean, it might be a little bit more in the first and second finger, but it, you might even be able to get it into that pinky finger. Know that your nerves are all kind of running together, so you're getting some tensioning on that, even if it's not directly into that ulnar nerve just yet. And then you can just gently start to bring that, bend that elbow in, so again, the palm is always gonna be away from you and you're moving. However, again, if it's too much to flex in the arm, you can just barely bend the elbow and then move the head away from you. And that's also going to add some pressure and tension on that nerve. And if any of this is too much, if you're like, this is a lot for me, what you can do is actually start to bend your head toward your hand. So if you come up and you bend your head toward your hand and relax, that's actually gonna take some pressure off of it and on pressure on pressure off pressure on pressure off as you put your head toward your hand so that it's not so much tensioning and pulling because the moment we pull our head away from the hand that's when it's more tension on the nerve if you were somebody who started having any sort of weakness or you know coordination type issues that's where we might want to do some sort of hand therapy like strengthening of your hands um, different coordination exercises, you know, PTs and occupational therapists do a lot of this stuff as well. And then just strengthening all the way up that chain too. Just want to really put that disclaimer that you don't want to go aggressive with anything nerve related. Getting an idea of where your shoulder blades are resting, getting more control of those, strengthening, doing scapular type exercises that can do a lot as far as helping your nerves operate a little bit more smoothly with a little bit more space throughout, like down the arm. 
Thanks very much for joining us. I hope you learned a little bit. You understand some of these nerve glidey type things. Maybe you can do the Batman phase. Um, comment below. Let us know if you've had any of these experiences, if you experience it anywhere else in the body. And make sure that you subscribe because we have so many more podcasts that we've talked about different nerve injuries like sciatica. That's a huge one, right? And we're going to have more in the future. And if you have recommendations on things that you need to hear, you have issues with in your body, we need to hear from you. So please comment below. 